And welcome back with me, 54 Bear, for some more chips or mips. Uh, last time we did the solar, so this has all been decommissioned now. I will strip it off the ceiling. This time we're going to be looking at the uh, weather station. The weather station is currently not reporting that there's a storm coming. A, an eyeball method of doing it is you look, to, look at this little turbine on top, when that starts spinning, a storm is incoming. So what these chips do is they are read, or this logic, is only the blue chips here that uh, deal with the weather station. So it's looking at the weather station and the value it's looking for is next weather event time. Currently that is returning a zero. That means the weather station does not know that, or you know, there are no storms that it can detect. When it detects a storm, this value turns from a zero to a number, which is the number of seconds until the storm hits. So the batch writer, on the other hand, only cares about whether the value is zero or greater than zero in this case. I mean, it's not doing a mathematical operation, but it's reading this. At the moment, it's still getting a zero and it's outputting to the flashing lights and it's a batch writer because I have multiple flashing lights on the same network and it will turn them on. That's all it does. And those two chips are all you need if all you want is a flashing light. Having said that, I have a second uh, logic writer in this case. Uh, it doesn't have to be a batch writer because I'm only writing out to a single thing. It's reading this same logic reader now, if I uh, get my handy dandy labeler, and I should call this, I'll change it from logic reader to LR weather. When we come over here now, you'll see that this is, you know, it honors the renaming and it says, OK, is looking at the logic reader for the weather. This one outputs to the LED display. And there's only one in this space, so that's all it can see. And it outputs the setting. That is this thing here. So to implement it in chips, very easy. If you want the LED display as well, you're looking at the three chips here, which are 10 watts, and whatever the small LED is. I don't actually remember, so let's look it up. Okay, LED display small, it uses 50 watts. I did not realize that. Okay, so that is the way of doing it with chips. Now we want to convert that to a MIPS or IC code way of doing things. So we'll take our chip, put it in our computer, Import whatever is on there. And I will pause the game. And I will open up the Stationpedia. Because we will need to be looking up these things. Now, as it happens, the LED is one of the things I'll want. So, I will define LED. And give it this number. This is the uh, batch name method of uh, addressing things, which means you you don't have to use pins, which is handy because the filtration unit that I use to run all this code only has two pins anyway. So we've got the LED. We need also the weather station. So weather has an awful lot of wreckage associated with it. All right, when you're, if you're doing the uh, batch lane method of IC coding, you probably already know this, but just to reiterate, never choose the kit. The kit and the weather station are different things. So you always make certain you choose the right thing. Copy the, the hash, and then we all define I'll just abbreviate it to station, give it that number. 
All right, so we've got the LED defined, we've got the station defined, that's all we need. So I'll put it on the top just to make it a little bit easier. Give it a, a comment label. Just so I know which bit of the code is dealing with what. All right, so what we want to do is read from the weather station the next weather event. Now, one of the reasons for having this uh, stationpedia open is when you scroll down, it gives you all of the logic variables that you can access. So we want to load, not in capitals, load batch into R0. Device hash is weather STN. The logic type is next weather event time. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can copy that. No. Nope. So I have to type it out. Uh -oh. And the capitalizer, it is uh, case sensitive. So when you've typed it right, and whether when it's valid or when it is a valid thing, it will show up as orange. Although having said that, let me just put that on a different line. If I gave it um, like vertical, that also shows as orange because vertical is a valid um, logic type, but it, you know, when you look here, vertical is not one of these things. So you do have to be careful. Just because it's orange doesn't mean it's right. All right, so we want the next weather event time. And because I'm using the, the batch method, I have to tell it that I want the average, even though there's only one. So if this is greater than zero, I well, I can give it an if condition or a branch condition, but there there really isn't any point. Because I know when it's zero, then that will equate to an off for the flashing lights, which I don't actually have. Flashing light, I needed I need this as well. So let's copy this. Define. Flashing light. Right, so yes, that is something that I want. Okay, I'll need a line there. So I want to save. Yes, keep forgetting about the caps. Uh, I want to save to the flashing light. Whether it's on the value of R0. Now, we can do this because when a weather event is not detected, R0 will contain a zero, which will mean that will turn the flashing light on, or off rather. When the value is not zero, it will be a large number. When you put in, so instead of saying on, if I said uh, 251, for example, that's the same in this particular instance as saying one. And well, let's say it's 253. That would equate basically to one. So you can actually use a larger than one value as a one without a problem. And I will also, because that uh, LED uses 50 watts, I will say the LED status on R0. So that means when there isn't a weather network, it will actually save some power by turning that LED off. Because if it's a, if it's a zero, I don't care whether it's on or off, doesn't matter. And I will also save batch to the LED its setting of R0. 
Now, when it's off, it doesn't matter. But when it's on, it will show what the second number of seconds are. So it actually, by doing it um, with IC code, you can actually do this quite easily. Whereas with chips, you would need uh, an additional chip to do that. All right, so that takes care of that. Let's close this off, export this, put it in, make certain that there are no errors. We're good. So now you'll notice that has automatically turned off. If I turn it on, the code should turn it back off. So that means all these chips can be decommissioned. And the flashing lights will still work. I mean, if I turn this on, the code immediately turns it off. That tells me that it's working. OK, so Chips or MIPS version or episode two. Hope you found something useful. I hope this uh, will alleviate any or assist with alleviating any uh, stress or resistance you may feel about learning what chips are and how to use them and how you can implement the same thing in MIPS without too much pain. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll catch you in the next one. 54 bear out.